This is early for me, y'all, because I like to sleep till at least 2 p.m. and 3 p.m., so I got up early just for y'all, right? I am so happy to be here today. This is actually my first time attending this conference, and I am just so excited to tell y'all all my business. So we're going to have a good time. Y'all been enjoying everything so far? All right, so let's get it started. I'm ready, you ready? Yes, ma'am. All right, one more time for Miss Lily Lyons. Oh. All right, so for those who don't know, my name is Maya Simone. I'm a radio personality here in Atlanta, and we're gonna have a great conversation. Yeah. Ooh, what you know about me, girl? I know, I know a good little bit about you. Okay, I'm ready, I'm ready. <laughs> but I'm gonna start off, I'm gonna start off like, it's, it's not gonna be anything crazy. <laughs> How did you know what age did you know you wanted to be a singer? You know, the crazy thing, and I always say this, I, I went to church for the first time when I was about five years old, and I was fascinated with the choir. Okay. And I was, I didn't know at that point I wanted to be a singer. I was just, you know how the children's choir, they just be off beat, going from side to side. <laughs> so I wanted to be one of those kids that was off beat, that went from side to side. But as far as me knowing when I wanted to be a singer, it's just something that I did. I knew I would eventually do something in entertainment, mm -hmm. but I didn't know why. I didn't yes. know what it would be, but I'm here now and I'm happy and y'all, <laughs> you know? So we're excited to have you. I mean, I think we're looking at a legend, right? Isn't she a legend? This lady right here holds so much power. You hold so much weight when it comes to the music industry and what it's, you know the ins and outs and you know the things that, and, and this is no shade to anybody, but you know the things that the new artists don't know because the groundwork was different back then. What do you feel about the state of music now, especially R&B? <laughs> now if you would have asked me last year, a couple of years ago, I probably would have had a different response. But you know, I'm often getting asked that question, what is the state of R&B? Is R&B dead? Do I feel like it's dead? <laughs> I will never feel like R&B is dead. What I do feel is that people are not in love anymore. Wow. And that's what I always say. There, there's no, everything is so microwavable. If you go on the internet, the internet was the worst thing that ever happened to love. I do believe that social yes. media has a big impact. Oh my God. So everything is so microwavable. You can hook up with somebody with, in a matter of a swipe. And there ain't no music playing. Can we test it real quick? <laughs> How many people by a show of hands are in a relationship? Wow. How many people are married? What? How many people are looking for somebody? <laughs> so, I think we got a good crowd of women. You know, it's, it feels rare, and I know what you mean. Because everybody's accessible. That's what it is. Too accessible. Too accessible. Now, coming up, you were a young mother. You had two kids by the age of 17. And it is very hard to do that. And you became successful. What has motherhood taught you? The truth? <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> you know, motherhood, and you, and how do you know I had two kids when I was 17? A little birdie told but, me. But, but that is the truth. Um, I was a mother of two by the time I was 17 years old. And even being so young, I knew I wanted to do something to change the way people felt about me, or to change the way people looked at me. Because my situation was, not like how you guys were. My dad left us when I was 10 years old when I needed him the most. So I wrote a book in 2019 and in one of those chapters, I talk about this and I say, when my dad left, he forced me into the arms of strange men that we call boyfriends today. Yes. Right? So my kids really made me want to do what I'm doing now. I didn't want to fail. I didn't want to be afraid because I already felt like a failure. I, I, I mean, I'm 17 with two kids, dropped out of high school, so I didn't really even have any direction. And I just, my mom used to look at me. I know this when I was pregnant. My mom used to look at me from the corner of her eye and just cry. I used really? to see her oh, here. Yeah. So everything that I did. Everything that you see, everything that I am is, is because of my mother. The way she looked at me, I wanted to do something to please my mom because I felt like a failure. 
Now, yeah. were you ever able to have that moment with her where you told her how you felt about what she felt about you? I had that opportunity actually before she passed away. But the beauty of my mother is that she never left me. She never left me. I was 15 years old, pregnant with my daughter. She's in here somewhere. And my, <laughs> and my daughter said, my mom said to me, baby, if I could take the pain for you, I would. And I believed her. That's just the type of person my mother was. But I was always striving to be something. I had to, I didn't know what it was gonna be, but I know that I was gonna be something big and it was gonna be beautiful. Yes. Sure. I mean, look at you now. We see you, you're smiling, you're shining, you have a glow. I know y'all can't see her face up close, but she is glowing up here. So it's something good going on in your life. And that's what we're here to talk about because we see you got your own business, you got a booth. I think your booth is right behind this stage here, or back, back I here. I see it right here. Oh, right here, oh, right here. It's right here. So she'll actually be taking pictures and talking to everybody after this interview as well. Right back there, it's color. What is it, one more time? I'm sorry. Cutie colors. Cutie, yeah. cutie colors, that's backwards, okay? <laughs> now, you talked about motherhood, but you're a grandmother now, and that's another big thing. So how does that make you feel, you know, putting on the other shoe? <laughs> you know, when it comes to this love thing, because my kids, I love my kids so much, and, and of course, relationships, you just put so much love into everything, and men and children, I never wanted to love anybody else. When my grandbaby was born, she put a battery in my back. <laughs> Honest to God, she put a battery in my back, and I had a reason to live, and she's right there. Where is she? Hi. In the, green, in the green sweater. Oh, she's so That's beautiful. That's the hot pamper. She, she's nine <laughs> years old now. You, know? you guys seen her on WB Reunited. She was a little baby. But she's years old now, and I love her so much. And I, everything that I do is, is really for her, you know, because we all go through those moments in life where we just want to just give up. We just yes. get tired. And, and my kids, they put me through hell. <laughs> And then sometimes you just gotta sit there. Yeah, they putting me through hell, but they mine. Yes. You know, so I never gave up on my children and my grandbaby is just everything to me. So I, wherever I went wrong with them, I'm trying to make the right with her, you know? And I think your personal life has made you a strong artist. You have been a strong influence. Talk about just, for those who don't know, SWV, we need the backstory. How did it become a group? How did you get started? I know it was like gospel first that transitioned it. Tell everybody the, the backstory with SWV. Well, let me just bring some clarity to the gospel thing. Okay, okay. so this is where that came from. So we were younger and, you know, Coco's mom had like this sunken living room where we, we tried to make a stage out of it. And so the only way we would be able to sing and be a group is if we act like we were singing gospel songs. <laughs> because she was so spiritual, she was not having the secular music in her house. So we would sing gospel songs until she left. And then once and then she left, turn up when she's gone. <laughs> well, the turn up was real once she left. But that's where that came from. But SWV was actually a vision of mine. And it all started because mm -hmm. of my children. I wanted to do something positive. I wanted to make my mother proud and I, I didn't know what it was going to be, but I'm like, well, shoot, singing is easy, you know. Let me just start a group. So I called Coco and I said, hey, I want you to be a part of my group. And she's like, ah, oh, whatever. I call you, when you. Call me back when you're serious. So <laughs> she didn't believe me because I was a mother. Yes. I was a mother. I had so much going on and 31 years later, here you are. we're here. You're here. Yeah. Now, yeah, give, show us some more love for that. She is on this stage right now. Now, there isn't a 90s playlist that doesn't have SWV on it. I mean, even if it's one song, we're going to hear Week. We're going to hear that. How does it feel to have that impact? Wow. You know, <laughs> and if I'm completely transparent, I always felt like, SWV never really got the love that we deserve, at, at least the industry love. Okay. But when I hear fans singing those songs, it makes it so much better. It yeah. makes us, because, you know, we can't rely on the industry, but our supporters, we love y'all so much. <laughs> we thank y'all so much. Come on, give yourselves a round of applause for that.
because they keep us alive, they keep us here, and they're the reason why we're here, honestly. So it, it feels so good, like even performing a song in all of these venues around the country. And I, I can't believe, they know the lyrics before we do. I mean, they so invested. I don't know what it is that you've done to me. They know the lyrics and everything. And so it's so shocking when we're on stage, we just kind of see them just just ad living. I'm like, how y'all know that? Yes. <laughs> but it's, it's a blessing mm -hmm. when people admire and show love to something, anything. If you a good painter, it's a blessing if somebody wants your service. So I'm just thankful 31 years later, you know, people still want to see us. Yes. What is your favorite song to perform? I would say anything with Wu Tang anything. Clan. Yeah. <laughs> That song is high energy. It's just so New York. You yeah, know? I, yeah. I, love it. I love it. Give me an experience in the studio. A moment that happened where y'all can laugh. You and the girls, y'all can just sit back and laugh. Just take us to one of those moments in the studio. Give us a story. One that would just live on, but one that is iconic that the world doesn't know. Oh, <laughs> Uh, it could be a feature. It could be a moment where somebody walked in and you couldn't believe who was in there. It could be anything. I think for me, it wasn't necessarily funny, but it was just like, oh my God, I can't believe. And that's when we recorded the song with Babyface for the okay. Waiting to Excel soundtrack. Aww. So when we went in there, that was just a whole different experience for us. So that was that moment we were like, oh my God. <laughs> I think we got something here, you know? So that was that moment that we, now, we got so many funny moments, but I don't know if I should stay here. <laughs> Y'all ain't gonna get me in no trouble. What happens in the studio stays in the that's studio. That's it, that's it, that's it. All right, so you wrote a book. If you could tell everybody the title, where to get it, and what it's about. Okay, so I, I wrote a book in 2019, and of course COVID happened, so it kind of, you know, kind of delayed a lot of things, but, the name of the book is called I Regret the Day I Lost My Virginity, You Are Not Your Past. And I put my heart in this book. It, it was it was very therapeutic for me. I speak about how, you know, I grew up in the Bronx, New York, and when I lost my virginity, how I lost my virginity, and how at 50 years old, because I just celebrated my 50th birthday Ooh. in July. Thank Congratulations. you. So you never know at 50 years old, you're gonna regret the day you lost your virginity. And, and, I, and I don't wanna, the reason why I don't wanna ask too much about that is because I want them to go get it and I want them to read it because I'm pretty sure there's a lot that people can relate to when it comes oh, yeah, to that. Absolutely. Because, and we're not even gonna touch on that because I know there's somebody in the audience who feels the same exact way just from that title alone. And, and, that, and it's not, and I know the title is really crazy and I do touch on that, but okay. that's not what the book is all about. Okay. It's, it's definitely not all about that. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying that 50 years old, that is something that I wish I could could give my future husband oh, and sometimes wow. we do things younger as teenagers that we can't take back mm -hmm. we can't there's no do-overs in life mm -hmm. you know so it was just kind of me pouring my heart out and just giving it to y'all and whatever y'all can pull from it I, be blessed and it's a blessing for me too now we <coughs> talked about how you don't feel as if SWV <coughs> as a group got love from the industry but you do get love from the fans. You do see that we are rocking with you. We are here. But your life was kind of put on display as a group on Bravo. You have a show. Do you have any regrets about that show? <laughs> Did y'all watch the show? <laughs> no, no. Actually, I, I don't have any regrets. I try not to regret anything I do. Okay. Just because I'm but yes you know um but i do think we could have figured it out a better way sometimes as women i don't especially women in television i really don't think we we really go about things the right way or because everyone wants to be no one wants to be the problem yes you know what i'm saying but it, but you're going to be the problem if you're not coming up with a solution mm -hmm. So I don't think we do a good job with, with bringing things together and, and, and dealing with resolve. And I think I personally want to, you know, display a lot more of that if we ever do future television. 
because I, I love women. Like, I, I think this is so beautiful. This is my first time here, and I've never seen so many black entrepreneurs and people who are inspiring to be. You can tell them the applause. applause, because this stuff is not easy. It is so not easy. Even me, I got a little change in, honey. Sometimes I'll be looking at this pot. I'm like, hey, well, this pot got to go over here, you know, because there's levels to this stuff. I may can do a little bit more, but it's still, it's hectic. It's hard, and it costs money to do all of this stuff, you know? So I'm just shocked to see everybody just kind of moving the way they move, and it's, it's a blessing, for sure. What advice could you give to someone? Well, tell me this first. What was your first thought? when the show was pitched and you were like, okay, I'm gonna go into reality TV. I know what it can come with, but it can be some good to it too. Um, what was your thought when you got that phone call? The very first show or this last show? Let's say the very first one, because that one may have a different impact than the second one. Well, of course, we were, I'm, I'm very transparent. <laughs> um, sometimes I'm a little too transparent because people are not always ready for what you ready to give, you know exactly. what I mean? So. I work with two other amazing women who they just kind of live their lives a little bit different. Of course, you have some major concerns because it's television, it's entertainment. So one thing that we did learn is that they can't use what you don't give them. Exactly. And if we act a fool and they decide to use that, then you're going to look like a fool. You can't blame nobody else. Because you did it. You did it. <laughs> they can't. You know? They can't Photoshop somebody yeah. throwing a glass of wine exactly. at somebody. Right. Well, I, I've never understood yeah. that. Now I'm not a part of that. Right. Because uh, we got beef on 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 TV. That's mm -hmm. saying we gonna have beef. With, ain't nobody throwing. We ain't gonna do that. <laughs> we not doing that. We not doing that. I love it. <laughs> now, if there's any advice you can give to someone who decides to put their life on a platform just to the world, what could, what would that be? As far as television? You know what? That is a double-ended question because that can be for music. Yeah. What does it feel like walking into the limelight as a singer and being someone on TV? You can give me a general. I just feel like this whole entertainment thing is so overrated. Wow. To me. I, I've, you know, I've been doing this for 31 years and we know how it looks to people. We read about people every day. They enjoy talking about us. You know, I've, I've heard People say stuff when we was, you know, battling weight issues. Oh, they so fat. Oh, they so ugly. Oh my God. So, and, but you have to be able to take those kind of beatings. And I don't think everybody is prepared for that. I always tell people I never want to discourage people from their dream. But sometimes you, you don't have to be mainstream. Sometimes you just may have to be the dopest singer in your church. Yes. Sometimes you just have to be the dopest singer in your community and it's okay. Everybody is not going to get to the level of Beyonce or Rihanna. It's just not going to happen because after 31 years, I would be there. <laughs> we would be there. And yes. every day, even after 31 years, we're still striving. We're still fighting for something. And that's something that pisses me off because I'm like, why we got to do all of this fighting? We thank you. 31 years dude. later. Why do we have to fight for everything? Yes. So, yes. If, I do, if we're still doing it and we're 30 million records and counting, of course, it's going to be a lot worse for a lot of people. you got to be able to take these beatings. And a lot of times, it's hard. It's yes. very hard. And that's why you see in entertainment, a lot of people die. A lot of people commit suicide because there is not many safe spaces for us. It's not. It's easy to find one of us passed out in a bathtub passed out dead or overdosing over drugs or whatever in a hotel because no one checks on us until it's showtime. It's time to get yes. that money. And I thought about that after, you know, only when they need you. Only when they need you. So it's important to have friends and create yourself a village of people who love you for real. Stop following everybody's life and entertainment. Stop it. Yes. Stop it. You know, Smoky you guys mirrors. are looking for inspiration. And I came here to tell y'all today, I cannot stand social media. If y'all go on my page, they, they get on me because they're like, you don't post enough. Well, I don't have anything to say today. <laughs> but it kills me when we have so many dreamers out here and we're spending so much time following people's lives that don't care about you. 
These celebrities do not care about you. I am not gonna spend eight hours looking at some celebrity ride jet skis in Miami. <laughs> it's not gonna happen. Because after that, what do you what time you have to do what you have to do for your life? For yourself. You're tired. Mm -hmm. They don't care. And I tell people this all the time. You're spending so much time with this wishing and wanting somebody else's life. Your life is amazing. Mm -hmm. Anything your journey is not is because you have not made the change. Absolutely. If you want your narrative to change, change the narrative. Do something different. These artists don't care. Stop following their life. It don't take that long to be inspired. Two minutes of inspiration. That's all you need. Not no four to eight hours looking at somebody's $80 million home. I mean, come on. I mean, it's just ridiculous. And it makes you look at yourself and feel like you're not enough. Feels like you're not enough. And I, mm -hmm. and I see social media and, and everybody look alike. You know, mm -hmm. everybody want the small waist and all of that. And all of that's great. But honey, is a man out there that'd love them love handles. <laughs> Cause I'm telling you, I, I'm a, I, I've experienced the surgery too, and then sometimes you look in the mirror, I'd be like, damn, it's, it's looking kind of. <laughs> but let me tell you something. I don't care. I'm gonna let it hang. I'm gonna let it hang. I'm gonna let it fall. I love it. If the food is falling, just shake it and love it. <laughs> it's if, natural. If they tell your knees, pick them up. It's gonna serve the same purpose. <laughs> I love it. I feel like you would be outside of here. Yo, oh God. I love it. Now, Cutie Colors, you started this business. Everybody's going to go learn about it. It's, a, it's in the beauty brand. Talk about, you know, how you got started. What made you start that? Well, as a little girl, and I looked at some pictures the other day, I've always worn lipstick. And I know it's played out now, but I love lip liner yeah. and lipstick. So every picture, I always found myself wearing lipstick, you know, 11 years old, seven years old, right? So I say, you know what, when COVID happened, it really put a battery in my back. I was with a group for 31 years and I'm like, wow, for you to tell me that I'm not essential, what we do for a living to feed our family, it doesn't mean anything right now in this season, that bothered me. Yes. That was a wake up call for me. And I say, you know what, Leanne, you have to tap into who you are. Because Lily is unavailable right now. <laughs> now Leanne have to, you know, get to work and, and start being a visionary because yes. that's that's what I've always been. I started my group or whatever. But you get lazy when things are working or when things are good, you, you you tap out, you get too comfortable. And I think I got too comfortable and it was COVID is the thing that really put that battery in my back again and I was like, you know, I have to do some of the things that I love because although I love SWV and I love you guys so much and we can all get weak in the knees together, I am an individual. I, I cannot go on vacation without them saying, oh, you got a show? No, I'm just going to, I'm here. I'm really to here. feel some sun. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's, it's inevitable, but it made me want to tap into the things that I love, my gifts outside of my group. Yes. And one thing about lipstick, to me, no matter what kind of, you don't have to have a good makeup day. It don't have to be a good hair day or whatever. You throw some shades on, but people are constantly looking at your mouth. At your, when you speak. They look at your mouth when you speak and they look at your teeth. Mm -hmm. So if you got bad teeth, at least you got a nice looking shade of lipstick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Or vice versa, you know. So that's what inspired me. I just wanted to tap in, just like you guys, just want to do something for me, something that I put out there, something that I wanted to do for myself. So that's how Cutie Colors was born. Well, Cutie Colors, if you can turn around, you can see the booth, it's right there. If you want to meet Lily, look, look, you already got a line at your booth. <laughs> and, and, and the beauty about Cutie Colors is that, and, and going back to mm -hmm. what do I feel about the state of R&B, is an R&B music inspired brand. Every brand, every, every, tube is named after artists. We have a color. Aww. Right now I have one the color wheat. So I have, you know, I'm just trying to pay homage to, you know, um, musicians. We got one called Love, my music soul child. We got Red Light Special TLC. TLC. So I'm just trying to slowly but surely keep this R&B thing alive. So that's that what it's so all smart. about. It's genius and I love yeah. it. Well, give it up one more time for her. We appreciate you so much for coming out. Remember, her booth is back that way. We're going to take a couple of pictures.
interest, but you can go ahead and head, head that way and get to know her, get to meet her. She'll be back there in just a second, okay? Thank you guys so much.